Okay, so uh, hi everyone. My name is Nikhil Bihalika. I am currently working as a DevOps engineer in OUP project. And today we'll be talking about <coughs> Google uh, Cloud Platform. And we'll be starting with very basic beginner's guide like <coughs> what exactly the Google Cloud Platform is and how it actually evolved, what is the background and everything. So uh, is my voice audible to everyone? Am I audible properly? Yes. Is it coming yes. low? Yes, yes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay. So I'll start with the overview of this uh, overall session. So uh, we'll be covering some topics like uh, what is the GCP platform is and why GCP platform is there, like why we should use GCP platform and uh, uh, the global infrastructure of the GCP overall uh, infrastructure, how they have uh, set up their uh, infrastructure as in the DC environment and uh, what are the services that GCP is offering and uh, what are the differences between the AWS and GCP cloud platforms. And uh, we'll be doing some hands-on with the GCP console. We are going to actually create an EC2 console or I can say a cloud computing uh, console elastic computing like GCP tells. And in the end, we will have some questionnaires about the overall topic. So let's start with the first topic. So. What is actually a GCP platform? Uh, so GCP is basically it's a suite of cloud computing services just like AWS have. So we have a lot of cloud computing services based upon creating VMs, uh, relational databases, and private networks, and all these things. Uh, the another uh, thing that GCP platform have is uh, it is based on the infrastructure and the practices, the best practices that Google follows for their own products like uh, the Google search engine, Gmail. Google Drive and YouTube. So these products are pretty much, uh, you know, famous for their reliability and their performance that they are giving as compared to other products. So based on those kind of infrastructure and the practices, Google is uh, came up with this GCP platform, where same uh, services that we are getting, which is currently hosted on a GCP platform. Uh, it pro normally provides infrastructure as a service platform. Then uh, it's a platform as a service as well. And it also provides the serverless computing environments. And some of the key services of GCPs are uh, compute, storage and databases, networking, big data, cloud AI management tools, and identity security and IoT. So this is overall GCP platform is about. And it provides us with the infrastructure that they are actually hosting their own application. So hardly we must have known that uh, uh, Google uh, gone down for an uh, hour or something. It normally goes maybe down for a uh, 10 to 15 minute, but it comes back up with the same performance. And that kind of infrastructure we will get if we try to opt in GCP as our cloud provider. So we'll move to the next. Uh, why we should go for a GCP platform? So there are a lot of uh, other cloud platform out there. Like there is AWS, which is currently a leader in cloud platform, I can say. Then we have Azure, which is uh, kind of, uh, you know, capturing the, uh, trying to capture the AWS market as well. And we have other uh, normal uh, vendors like IBM. Then we have uh, uh, Redshift uh, from Red Hat Linux and VMware as their cloud solutions. But if we going to compare the pricing part, so GCP is very, have a good pricing models as compared to AWS. So normally AWS is something which, uh, uh, you know, try to give the price on a per hour basis where a GCP goes beyond that. It gives our uh, prices on a per seconds, sometimes minutes also. So if you are using a specific GCP service for 15 minutes, you will be definitely going to get charged very less if you are going to compare it from AWS because AWS will charge you on an hourly basis. Even if you're using that service for a minute, or maybe 30 minutes, but the charges are going to be stable at hourly basis. And uh, it is uh, pretty much fast and reliable. We can say, because if we are going to talk about Gmail or uh, any other YouTube uh, that Google services have on an online basis, uh, it normally goes down, right? It, it definitely goes down, but uh, we haven't uh, heard of a lot of incidents, incidents like where <clears throat> a complete, uh, uh, you know, Google uh, Drive was gone corrupted or uh, some data was lost during the Google uh, 
in the Google infrastructure. So these kind of events are normally that we haven't heard a lot, but uh, that's why uh, we are going to get that fast and reliable infrastructure on a GCP platform. And uh, another point is GCP actually provides a live migration services, which is basically very hard to achieve in other cloud platforms. So it it uh, works like uh, if uh, so I have a link here that I can show you. So basically live migration is something that it keeps a virtual machine instance running when we are actually doing something on our host system. So it will give us a, a you know replica exact replica of our existing environment and it will host it on cloud and we can you know do our uh, any kind of irregular maintenance or upgrades that are required and uh, many some grid maintenance are there okay so during that time it can definitely gives us a good support and it will automatically move our complete application to the cloud platform and uh, this is something where we we are not going to you know stop our service or anything it will be a complete zero downtime migration and this is something uh, google offers as out of box service inside their google cloud platform so this is something that uh, we can definitely take a look when we are using gcp or maybe we can go towards gcp because of uh, this uh, specific service that they are providing and another thing is gcp provides multiple services supports the big data storage so currently uh, data is something uh, which is you know it's in a lot of amounts and very large volumes it is present and uh, we are using some uh, uh, some uh, like artificial intelligence techniques and machine learning techniques but to manage these processing we definitely need to have that kind of uh, storage uh, which is accessible accessible in that faster way so big data is something that uh, currently gives us all these uh, you know kind of services and gcp provides as a enough support to the big data uh, services and it helps us to create a complete cloud based big data infrastructure Okay, so we don't have to go anywhere in case we are uh, working on a big data storage and big data uh, services. We can get everything inside GCP and it provides uh, like in-house support to the big data storage in a lot of better ways. So next point that we have a global infrastructure of GCP. So however, uh, the services that they are providing, they are somewhere managing everything on a ground level. So uh, GCP definitely provide two level of infrastructure. The first infrastructure is the physical infrastructure. Basically, it's the data centers that they are managing on redundant uh, locations across the globe. Uh, the kind of services that they are using to maintain those database uh, data centers like a redundant power supply, uh, high bandwidth, low latency network, and uh, pretty much good uh, security on a level basis where no one can access that data centers without a proper authorization. So that kind of physical infrastructure uh, Google definitely provides. And also they have a thing where they are actually running these data centers uh, without ACs and they are using some uh, eco solutions to run those data centers. So they are using water flowing throughout the data centers and everything. So that kind of implementation that they are currently using to make sure that uh, the overall implementation is eco-friendly from an environmental perspective. So that I actually have that. So they have their Oregano data centers. So see this, you can see it's a low carbon communication. That means they are implementing this or managing this data center in pretty eco-friendly way. And definitely they are going to move it to more and more. Um, see, so here you can see that we have a leather which is in low carbon and there's Montreal is there and Sao Paulo. So in some way they are actually also, you know, kind of very much concerned about the uh, infrastructure and sorry uh, the environment as well so on that level they are managing the physical infrastructure of the overall uh, google cloud platform uh, services but also they have an abstract way of managing this infrastructure 
so google cloud service is available in different location like north america south america or europe asia almost uh, all of the locations that they are trying to capture and uh, we can actually choose where we can locate our applications that can meet our latency availability and uh, durability requirements so if i'm sitting in mumbai i definitely don't want my application to be hosted in north america or south america or any europe region okay so because it is going going to give me a high response time when i'm trying to uh, you know so i have that option to set up my application uh, you know uh, besides my location where the current uh, gcp infrastructure is set up and based on that i have some three types of options like uh, i have a region i have zones and i have a uh, specific services which are independent of region and zone so if i want to uh, make sure my uh, application is specifically hosted in a specific region i have to make sure that that application should be redundant so that's why i have zones so zones are basically something that are a deployment area of gcp resources with a single failure domain so zone is something uh, it is actually a a, a, a logical uh, group of multiple data centers and these data centers are connected uh, to each other on a redundant, uh, on a redundant level but we have an application working in all of these data center at the same time but in case this specific zone is going down which which means that data center is going down then there won't be a redundant way to recover from that application we have to make sure we configure it in multi zone region basically so that we can have a, another zone active during that failure of the specific reg, uh, specific uh, domain in the zone but when our application goes a regional level we already have a multi zone setup where we have our application in a redundant way setup so that uh, in case any specific zone goes down my application will be still working and the workloads will be handled by the other availability zones so uh, in case we have a zone here but uh, in aws we tell them availability zones so and some of the services are definitely not not specifically binded to any region or specifically to zone so these are uh, some zonal region zonal services that i'm using so a computer in, compute engine environment or a virtual machine i can host it in a single zone which will operate in a single zone but when my service comes to a app engine application which will redundantly deployed across multiple region across multiple zone within a single region so it won't uh, be impacted uh, due to any specific zonal outages and i have other multi regional service which are redundant and distributed within and across the region so that if that service specifically goes down in any specific region it is not going to be impacted it will still work since the overall uh, setup of the global infrastructure of the gcp is on a multi regional level so this is the overall infrastructure setup if you want to go to the exact uh, link i can give it here so we have currently available these this much of regions okay, and these these are again connected to uh, you know wired networks so these are actually the lines which are going through the specific seas and uh, the fiber lines and they are connected through these data centers everywhere okay and we will understand how the traffic is working okay how much so these are all cold uh, cold latency lines and the green ones are the warm latency line that's what i, I actually assume just a second okay so submarinal cable investment is this one which is the green one so there they have you know added these uh, cables below the sea and this is their current network so current network is i am not sure how they have installed that network but uh, there is definitely uh, some way that they have installed it maybe through a wifi or some wireless connectivity and this is their overall uh, i can say a dashboard for a health services or a health dashboard of the all services that they can see so we have this much of services which are currently provided by uh, 
Google, and these are the different regions that I have. So you can see there are some multi-region services, okay, which we can use. So whenever we deploy these services, it is going to be a multi-region, and there won't be uh, a latency issues during that because automatically Google will uh, understand how to uh, manage your traffic when the specific regional level failure comes in. And these are the total numbers that we have for all the regions, zones, and the network age locations, and the total countries where the GCP cloud platform is currently available. Okay. So this is the overall global infrastructure of GCP. Now we'll move some, some of the differences that we, uh, we can identify major differences between AWS and GCP. So first thing is first pricing. Pricing definitely AWS, you know, at a granular level, AWS goes per hour, but when it comes to a Google Cloud platform, it can goes up to per minute and per second utilization that you are going to pay. So you can set up these parameters inside the Google Cloud platform and you can uh, pay for what you are using on a second or a minute level. So that is something, uh, a major difference that GCP has kind of uh, gathered around during their development. And another is the container service. So Docker and Kubernetes are something that AWS allows to uh, used on the AWS platform, but GCP only allows Kubernetes to be developed. You can only use Kubernetes services in GCP and out of the box, it doesn't, uh, for, I guess it doesn't uh, support the Docker environment to be uh, uh, managed through their uh, GCP platform. So one of the object storing that AWS have is the AWS S3, which is, which is the main success for, for the AWS. And AWS S3 is something that is multi-regional and uh, very much uh, reliable in case of uh, the storage and the data protection. So uh, by default, AWS is using AWS S3 is, as their uh, storage, object storing technique, but uh, Google Cloud Platform has the Google Cloud Storage. So whatever services that we are using to store, like we are using Gmail, if you are using uh, Google Drive, or if you are using any other uh, other things as a, a partner solution for Google Cloud, it is only going to use Google Cloud. So they have this Google Cloud uh, standardized storage platform that they provide for this uh, servers and they are using it almost everywhere. So they don't have any kind of uh, AWS S3 Glacier or uh, some archiving technique. They are just using Google Cloud for their all kind of services. Uh, when it comes to hybrid support, AWS has an in-house hybrid support. So AWS definitely uh, allows us to, uh, you know, have a hybrid environment where we have we are using on-premises server, uh, which are currently at our location, and we are using some of the AWS services which are connected throughout this uh, uh, connection that we are going to specify. So AWS in-house provide that support but GCP doesn't. So the GCP have some partners, uh, which we have to take help of these partners whenever we are doing some hybrid environment setup where we have an on-premise house or we have something uh, which is currently hosted in a different cloud platform. So that time we have to be dependent on partners. GCP doesn't provide any kind of enough support to you know set up a hybrid environment. Uh, Disaster recovery in AWS. Okay, so disaster recovery is basically a so AWS follows. Uh, uh, I can say it 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 calls a a, a uh, okay. Uh, actually, we call it a managed service basically. So uh, this is a yeah uh, the uh, that model is called as a shared responsibility model. So some of the uh, responsibilities are taken care by AWS while some of the responsibility AWS want us to take care of, like when it comes to disaster recovery, AWS have to, uh, AWS provide some uh, documentation and some best practices that we have to perform whenever we are uh, dealing with some disaster recovery kind of situation. But GCP uh, doesn't only provide documentation, it provides a complete end-to-end -end solution 
for our DR or backup services. And we have to just configure that service and everything will be taken care by GCP. So that's what GCP is currently telling that they are have an out of the box DR setup with them. So we have to just uh, configure the right parameters and we, uh, we will be, uh, you know, uh, we will be very, uh, we'll be in peace when in case if any disaster recovery is happening we don't have to do some bcps or everything because google is itself going to configure every uh, or going to manage everything so we won't have to be that much aware about what is going wrong or everything is fine but when it comes to aws definitely we we do some bcp plans we make sure that our services are up and running whenever there is any kind of outages happening so that thing we definitely have to make sure a lot but gcp we don't have to worry about all these things so this is these are the main differences that uh, we can see between the aws and gcp platform the other major difference i uh, actually observed is that the overall search so aws is still i can say it's a leading platform in google uh, in uh, uh, in cloud computing environments right and uh, they have actually uh, started very early and they have uh, n number of uh, services that they are using even uh, i even i have uh, saw that they are also supporting uh, um, uh, what they say actually yeah uh, so uh, bitcoin is based on uh, the um, which platform we am not sure. cryptocurrency yeah a decentralized platform we tell them just a second Okay, so AWS is just now started with, you know, blockchain development also. So they provide some services which basically helps the developer to create their dApps or we can say decentralized apps on blockchain. So AWS has always been in a higher uh, way of usage. And also you can see in the last five years, the overall searches that are happening for AWS is pretty much large as compared to the blue one, which is the google cloud platform because google cloud is just it's a very early to market and people haven't started using them for their production workload at least and that i'm aware about I'm not sure about the uh, big clients but definitely some startup and mid companies haven't started directly using gcps they are just doing some r d on that stuff from a you know a, a multi-cloud platform and also i can see a lot of responses you can get in Stack Overflow is more about the Amazon AWS services. So a lot of people are using uh, Amazon web services as their uh, main infrastructure. And a lot of people are expert uh, in, in that specific service. So Google Cloud, uh, it's very early stage. Uh, people are really uh, not, uh, you know, haven't done that much of studies. Uh, they have a lot of support, uh, which is basically open source, like Stack Overflow. So Stack Overflow, it's something where you can get any kind of solution or a right guidance uh, uh, based on the people's experience. But Google Cloud is very much, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, early in that. Uh, people are not that much experienced. So that is a main concern that I, I see when we are going to implement something on GCP as our uh, application backend. So as of now, we are pretty much good with the points that we have covered and we understood like what we can uh, actually expect from Google Cloud Platform B when we start using it, right? So let's take a look at the Google Cloud, uh, this thing. So you can start with the Google Cloud uh, setup anytime. You just have to uh, sign up yourself uh, and you have to fill in some credit card or debit card details. Uh, it won't actually charge you anything, but it is uh, going to do a small transaction to make sure uh, that uh, your card is valid and it is uh, having the right amount, right? And when you start it, you actually get a free trial of 300 credits. So every Google account gets a $300 uh, credit and you have to use it within 90, 90 days. That is something that you, uh, uh, you won't get, but let us just go to learn more. So I am I am sure that they have somewhere that ninety days limit because I have seen that part before as well. But what I am seeing right now is that I guess uh, 
they only have a 300 credit and once it runs out you are going to get charged okay okay so i think i'll just activate that one okay so to, to do that i guess i have to enter my on this things Okay, so I haven't actually added card details. So it is not going to start my account. Okay, we can go through different items here. So compute engine is our something that we can create our different instances, types of interests. Like we have a VM, we have an instance template, disk snapshot, instance option. Okay, so let's start with a simple VM machine that we can create. Okay. Okay, I guess I have to enter these details. So. Just give me a moment.
Okay, so uh, guys, actually, uh, this is embarrassing, but uh, my debit cards are not working. I'm not sure. It is not actually allowing me to create an account, just a free account. But yeah, if you, I think I think you require credit card. No, so this is some domestic usage. It is showing that it is only allowing for domestic usage, not for international. This is something. So you can use a debit card, credit card. It's not a problem. You can start a free trial anyhow. Uh, but uh, currently, I don't think I have a, another account which where you can show you the hands-on part. So I actually thought we are good with the account part, but no, they need some details. So I guess we can skip for that part, but uh, we can, you know, talk about this TCP and we can and try to uh, solve some some of your questions if you are having as of now. So any questions? Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you can give me questions in chat also. That won't be a problem. Or you can ask me if you have a specific question. Maybe we can discuss about it. Even I don't know that. Yeah, hi, I... yeah Jane. Hi. So uh, in our organization, are we using uh, this uh, GCP uh, for any project? Yes, I have actually heard uh, that uh, we are actually looking at some other cloud providers as well. And we started with GCP and we are specifically, I guess, using Kubernetes services to deploy our Frost application and, you know, uh, to update the version of that Frost application uh, because we have to make sure our application is uh, kind of highly available. And Kubernetes is something which uh, provides a very good high availability uh, in case whenever there's an application uh deployment comes in place but uh yeah we we are actually using gcp in our environment or our organizations okay so uh priya i guess Everybody is okay. If um, yes, I shall stop the recording. Okay. Just yeah. It was a quick session actually. So.